Hi everyone. Um, so this is chapter 11, Reality Therapy. Uh, so the next slide is an introduction. We're talking about William Glasser and also W.E. Wilbolding. Uh, underlying problems of most clients are the same. They are either involved in a presently unsatisfying relationship or lack what could even be called a relationship. So, um, you know, as humans, uh, we're known as social beings. So that means that we can't do everything ourselves. Uh, and the relationship that we have with other people plays a significant part according to the reality therapy chapter. Okay. This means that people are unable to, are unable to connect with other people, get close to other people, or have a satisfying relationship with at least one significant person in their lives. We're not trying to be about Instagram where we have like 1 million followers or whatever. We're talking about actual real people that have a real meaning to you, uh, into your life. Sorry, there's a dog across the street. Few people understand that unhappiness comes from their choice of behavior. Uh, clients choose their behaviors as a way to deal with the frustrations caused by unsatisfying relationships. And diagnosis should only be done for insurance purposes. Ineffective behaviors are not mental illnesses. So we're talking about Alzheimer's, epilepsy, traumatic brain injury or TBI, brain infections, those are physical brain damages, okay? So if a, a therapy uh, framework doesn't believe in, let's say, a diagnosis, even though in the insurance you might say this person has, let's say, uh, PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, and said we'll talk a little bit more about um, having anxiety and then also having maybe some sort of obsessive compulsive disorder or something like that, uh, but not necessarily something that is diagnosable in, in the DSM uh, specifically. Okay, so part of reality therapy is also choice theory. The theoretical basis for reality therapy and explains how and why we function the way we do. In reality therapy, delivery system for people, uh, for helping people take more effective control of their lives. Uh, therapy is helping and sometimes teaching clients to make more effective choices as they deal with people they need in their lives. So again, again, we're focusing on increasing the healthiness or the, the, the strength of a relationship with another person in their lives. And we can start with a therapist, but however, the client should be talking and focusing on relationships with people in their own world. Okay. All right. Obviously, on this slide, it basically kind of just lets you know where reality therapy could be very effective, which is kind of like a lot of places. Um, I'll let you pause and review this if you want to. I'm not going to read through this. All right. Key concepts of human uh, human nature. Choice theory. We are not born blank slates waiting to be externally motivated by forces in the world around us. So the blank slate theory is basically uh, what some philosophers said uh, happened, which is that when we are born, we know nothing. OK, some of you guys might agree with that and some philosophers do as well, but others don't. And uh, most people don't. And the reason why is because when we are born babies, we cry. And the reason we cry is because we know that when we cry, we're going to get, let's say, breastfed back in the olden days, right? Or currently as well. Um, but that's something that you knew how to do as a baby is to cry when you're not happy or you're hungry. And so is that something that means that you're born a blank slate? Not necessarily, right? So again, that's something that we're uh, debating about or we're talking about within this framework. So within this one, we're not born blank slates. So they're born with five genetically encoded needs that drive us. So one of them is survival. Again, like maybe crying to get uh, milk, self-preservation. Number two is love and belonging. Three is power, which is inner control, the belief that you can do something. Freedom is independence or be able to choose what you want to do. And then fun or enjoyment, okay? So of these five things, you need to remember that uh, reality therapy is talking about um, low levels of one or the other. Okay, and usually um, we all have all five of these things in it, uh, in, in ourselves. However, each of us has a different, like let's say level or strength when it comes to uh, certain things. So each person has these needs, it varies in strength. Which of the five is considered the most important and why? So in the sense of if you return back to that slide, uh, which one would you think is the most important or when people voted and why? 
I'll give you a second to think about it. Maybe go back and look at them. Um, the one that is considered the most difficult is love and belonging. And why do you think love and belonging is the most difficult out of all of those? It's because ding, 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 it requires other people to also uh, return those things, okay? Uh, to belong to something means that you need to actually uh, communicate with other people and then feel like you belong to something. All the other ones are more uh, focused on the self. So again, this relationship thing with reality therapy becomes a major issue right there, right? Uh, when we feel sad, one or more of the five are not being met. In choice theory, we do not satisfy our needs directly. As children, uh, we store all of our experiences into a quality world or what is known as a paradise. Okay, a paradise is a wonderful place that you want to be. And each person's paradise is very different. Your paradise could be, you know, um, living in the mountains. And another person could be living in the city. So again, our paradises are very unique to each uh, individual. The paradise is very specific to the person. The paradise is illustrated in something that looks like a picture album. A uh, picture album is something that maybe millennials might no longer know about, but it's kind of like an Instagram, okay? Uh, think about all the pictures that you have. Uh, usually people post you know, these ideal places or ideal pictures of themselves or their people around them. OK, uh, but picture albums, again, photo albums, right, of all these uh, visions that we like or we appreciate or we want. Some of the photos may be blurred and the therapist is there to help them put it in focus. Some clients coming into the therapy have no people in their picture albums at all. You know, sometimes I ask you to look at people's Instagrams and all of this is just nature pictures. And I wonder, hmm, or cityscapes. Why don't you have any pictures of your friends or yourself? And that is something that makes me think, okay? And so within this framework, you might think about that as well. Some clients have people, but are unsatisfied with the way that they're relating to each other. Uh, and the therapist is to turn on one of uh, the people in your client's pictures album, or turn into one of them, and then help them maybe focus uh, their relationships uh, or refocus their relationships with the people that are already in there, that are maybe blurry, or whatever the term you would like to use. Okay, so in this one, you can see right here, there's a beautiful kind of maybe Caribbean or Hawaiian island with a bunch of beautiful huts or yurts. I think that that would be paradise to live there, wake up every morning, look at the ocean and stuff like that. You know? And then let's look at Kim Kardashian's Instagram. And if you look at the pictures there, you see pictures of herself in a beautiful you know, dresses, in beautiful fashion, makeup, you know, things that she probably values, going, to, you know, skiing with her family and friends, her husband is in the picture, uh, Ralph Lauren, who's a major designer, is there. So you can see in her paradise or quality world, um, you know, pictures of her children and then let's say her makeup artist, right? So again, you're starting to understand what it means to have this kind of like idealized uh, photo album, or picture album of all the things that one finds important in our lives. Choice theory explanation of behavior. Total behavior is all behaviors made up of four inseparable but distinct components. Acting, thinking, feeling, and physiology. Okay, so your behavior, all of it is made up of these uh, four inseparable things that you do. Okay, and all these things uh, affect how you act, think, and feel as well. Okay, so all those things are components of, you know, uh, what it affects. Total behavior is what we do to try and satisfy our needs. Uh, Glasser does not believe in talking about being depressed, having a headache, or being angry, or being anxious. This is passive and does not show personal responsibility. Uh, instead, for in, in terms of total behavior, it's that we are being depressed. Uh, we are depressing ourselves. Okay. Uh, we are taking the responsibility of our total behaviors, okay? Before, we're being depressed. That's kind of passive sounding. But when we say we make ourselves depressed, then we understand that there's an action coming, you know, and affecting us uh, in our lives. Characteristics of reality therapy focuses on the unsatisfying relationship or lack of relationship, as we said uh, in the earlier slides. Meaningful relationships foster emotional health.
When the client complains about how other people are causing them pain, the therapist does not help find the fault. Instead, the therapist asks clients to consider how effective their choices are in terms of their relationships with others. Okay, so, you know, how is the quality of your relationship with your family? Okay, how does that, you know, basically affect uh, uh, your life and your health? your happiness, your well-being. Uh, what the client cannot control is not important. It's what you can control, okay? Maybe there are people who are really irritating your lives that you have to live with or work with, okay? So instead of saying things that you can't control, which is, you know, hiring people or whatever, let's say if it's a coworker, how can you live with these people in a way that won't, you know, make you sad or, or whatever it is? The only person you can control is yourself. Remember that um, a lot of times we in relationships, if we don't know about a lot about relationships, or maybe even when we do, uh, we sometimes think that we can fix people. Uh, and then we marry them or we become uh, uh, important in their lives. And then we realize, oh, I can't change them. They never want to change. Uh, so there's no, there's, there's going to be no success here. Emphasize choice and responsibility. Reject transference. Transference, again, is uh, when the client um, basically sees the therapist as a specific person in their lives or is reminded of that person. Uh, keep the therapy in the present. Avoid focusing on symptoms and challenge traditional views of mental illness. Emphasize choice and responsibility. If we choose all we do, we must be responsible for what we choose. So for example, at work, if you choose to do good work and cooperate with people, we gain the respect of our coworkers. We can also feel power in our work. Remember those five things? One of them is power, okay? Uh, reject transference. Transference is the way that both therapist and client avoid being who they are and owning what they are doing right now. So for example, the client says that you remind him of his parents, your response would be, but I'm not your parent, I'm your therapist. What that does is that's bringing that person back to the present right now, because right now they're, they're, they're thinking about something else uh, about you, but about something else. Uh, not necessarily you as a therapist, but you as, let's say, a, a parent or something like that. So we're instead we're like, nope, you're going to come back and say, no, I am your therapist. Keep the therapy in the present, which is connected to what I just said. Uh, whatever mistakes were made in the past are no longer important. The past may have contributed to the present problem, but the past is never the problem. What has happened is over. It cannot be changed. The more time we spend looking back, the more we avoid looking forward. Uh, again, this is very present focused, right? Here and now, and then also future oriented. We are free to make choices, even though our external world limits our choices. And that's something that we talked about earlier with existential therapy as well, where even though we can make choices, there are certain things that we cannot not make choices, which is if we live in poverty, we can't just say, I've decided I'm not gonna be poor today. Okay, or if you have a disability, I'm going to decide I'm not going to have a disability today. All those things are not necessary because of you, but because of your environment. Uh, so there are certain things that you cannot not choose. Okay, or you can say I choose not to be Asian today. Okay, or something like that. And remember that. Avoid focusing on symptoms. Focusing on the past protects the client from facing the reality of unsatisfying present relationships. People who believe that they have a symptom will believe that the only way to be happy is to be symptom free. They refuse to believe that they are suffering because they choose that behavior. All right, challenge uh, traditional views of mental illness. Psychiatry can be hazardous to both physical and mental health. Criticizes heavily depending on the DSM for uh, diagnosis and treatment. Criticizes the widespread use of psychiatric medications. And why is that? The reason why is because when you take the medication, then uh, there's also additional things that could happen to that person as well. We're talking about side effects and stuff like that, uh, which causes other symptoms as well. So we're talking about, you know, the fact that medication doesn't always, uh, is not always like a cure-all or a magic potion. If you don't have problems, you have solutions that don't work. So they're trying this solution, they're trying this solution, they're trying solutions, but these solutions are not working for some reason. So maybe they go to therapy is to help them find the right solution that does work.
All right, therapeutic process, therapeutic goals. Um, the goal is to help clients get connected or reconnected with the people they have chose to put in their quality world or their paradise. Again, remember, I just want to remind you, born with five genetically encoded needs that drive us, survival, love and belonging, power, freedom, and fun. So all those things, we want to make sure that they have uh, stuff that they value within the people that are uh, surrounding them. Therapist function and role mentoring process where the therapist is the teacher and the client is the student. Sometimes they need to learn how to have a relationship with another person in an effective way. Have you ever met anyone where you're like, ooh, that person is kind of a strange person or weird or something like that? And you're like, I don't know why. Probably is because they might not necessarily know how to uh, connect with other people. And that's not necessarily their fault. Maybe it's their environment that prevented them from having a lot of socialization. Uh, so in therapy, it might be a, a really great place for them to start learning how to. And it'll be a safe space because you're creating a safe space for your client and they can practice, you know, all these different behaviors and, and examine or analyze what they say and what uh, people might uh, uh, get from those responses. All right, uh, mentoring process where the therapist is a teacher and the client is a student, we just said that. How to engage in self-evaluation. Is what you're choosing to do getting what you want and need? How would you most like to change your life? What do you want in your life that you are not getting? What would you have in your life if you were to change? And what do you have to do now to make these changes happen? So these are questions that you can ask your client and uh, see how they respond. You don't obviously have to answer ask all these questions at one time, but as you go along with a client, you know, when it's appropriate, when the timing is right, you would ask these questions. Challenge the client to examine what they're doing, no matter how bad things are. There is hope. The, pro, uh, the therapist is on the client's side. You're always a team together. Together, they can creatively address or uh, a range of concerns and options. Again, that's where that's why they're going to therapy is to be able to talk to someone that they uh, can trust uh, and to work things out uh, in their lives. Clients experience in therapy do not talk too much about the past or about the symptoms. Emphasize, emphasis is on action. When clients change the way they're doing, they change how they're feeling and thinking. Remember that with uh, 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 behavioral therapy and cognitive behavioral therapy? Self-evaluation process is what you're choosing to do bringing you closer to the people that you want to be closer to right now. Is what you're doing getting you closer to a new person if you're presently disconnected from everyone? So those are things that really require a client to be introspective and to really say, hey, is my yelling and throwing tantrums really bringing anyone closer or, you know, or is it driving people away? So if it is and I want to and I know that this is now considered, let's say, inappropriate, um, maybe I should consider changing. OK, clients should sense some urgency and um, uh, that means like kind of like having some anxiety, uh, which is good uh, because they can then now use this into their real lives. And it can be quite nerve wracking, you know, uh, trying to have all these new behaviors that you've never uh, uh, tried out before. Relationship between therapist and client is supportive, obviously. Sees the therapist is skilled and knowledgeable. So you become a model for them. They're going to observe you, how you present yourself, how you talk to other people, or how you talk to the client themselves. And then uh, they might follow along with it. Okay. Application, therapeutic techniques and procedures, the practice of reality therapy, cycle of counseling. Two major components. Number one is creating the counseling environment, and then number two is implementing specific procedures that lead to changes in behavior. So the number one is having a safe space for your client. Number two is uh, having basically kind of a treatment plan uh, where they can like, you know, practice these changes in their behaviors. The counseling environment, um, when we talk about that, support and challenging environment allows clients to begin making life changes. So you're not going to argue with them. You're not going to attack them. You're not going to accuse them or demean them. You're not going to boss them around, criticize them, find fault. You're not going to force them to do something coercing or encouraging excuses or holding grudges and still fear and giving up easily. OK, so those are things that you don't want to do with a client because that's going to prevent them from moving forward. Procedures that lead to change. We're motivated by change in number one, when we are convinced that our present behavior is not meeting our needs. So when we realize, hey, what we're doing right now is so not 
cool to most people and that's why they are avoiding you, then you probably want to change, especially if you really want to have a relationship with someone. And number two, when we believe we can choose other behaviors that will get us closer to what we want, then that means, okay, maybe I try this out and I think this makes more sense, then they're going to adopt these behaviors. So what does the client want from therapy is something that you wouldn't want to ask them directly. Ask questions about their choices and their relationships. Okay, you know, if they do have relationships or if they don't, talk about those things and see and, you know, examine it. Listen to the client talk. See if you can pick up any patterns, any behavioral patterns or, you know, any observations that you think is important for your client to also understand and see as well that they might not notice. Uh, the first session defines what uh, the wants of the clients are. Uh, key unsatisfying present relationships that they do. Key question is, whose behavior can you control? Remember, that was a question we talked about earlier, and the only uh, uh, person that we can control behavior-wise is your own self, right? So again, reminding them that, you know, letting them realize that as well if they don't realize that already. Second, and so on sessions, how clients can make better choices. Clients can learn that they are not at the mercy of others. They are not victims. The YDEP system is the W-D-E-P, which stands for wants. So exploring your wants and needs and perceptions, direction and doing, and then evaluation or self-evaluation, and then planning and action. Okay. Um, so wants. The heart wants what it wants, just like Selena Gomez says, right? Her heart wanted Justin Bieber for quite a long time. If not still, we don't know. Um, assist clients in finding their wants and hopes. They are related to these five basic needs. Remember before uh, when we were talking about, uh, what do you want? Explore the picture, album, and quality world of that person. What do you want from your friends and family? If you were the person that you wish you were, what kind of person would you be? That's a really insightful question, right? So it's something that you would want to ask the client and hear what their responses are. Uh, what would you uh, be doing if they were living as you uh, want to, or if you were living as you want to? What do you really want to change in your life? What is it that you want that you don't seem to be getting from life? What do you think stops you from making the changes you would like? How do you look at the situation? And where do you see your control? Okay, so these are questions that you want to ask in the want section, just to have them talk it out and really verbalize uh, the things that are in their head. Direction and doing, uh, remember the WD now, what are you doing? Even if the problems are rooted in the past, clients need to learn how to deal with them in the present by learning better ways of getting what they want. Ask about the overall direction of their lives and where they're going and where their behavior is taking them. So you might want to be asking questions like, what are you doing now? What did you actually do yesterday? What did you want to do differently this past week? What stopped you from doing what you said you wanted to do? And what will you do tomorrow? To have them verbalize all these things so they understand all the choices that they have um, and where they're actually going. Because the decisions that they make during this time is going to show you what path they're going to or what direction they're going to go. Only productive if they actually do the things that they say. An example is, you know, um, what happens when your car maintenance light goes on? When your car maintenance light goes on, you probably will take it to the auto mechanic to have it, you know, looked at or fixed or whatever, right? And so we need to remind them that they're like that as well. You know, if something's going on with their mental health, you know, uh, then they need to go and try to resolve those things. Or if they have a problem with their relationship, how do they resolve those things? Evaluation or self-evaluation, the third part of the YDAP system, cornerstone of reality therapy procedure. Okay. Does your present behavior have a reasonable chance of getting you what you want now? And will it take you in the direction that you want to go? That's a really deep question right there, right? So, you know, you, people might think that they know what they're doing, but when you ask them this question and they have to answer it and give you kind of like an example or let you convince you somehow, it's going to be a little bit more difficult. And so they're going to realize, oh, you know what? I am a little bit more aimless than I thought I would be. Some clients will need a therapist to be directive at the beginning of treatment. Uh, when there are behaviors that are not effective, again, uh, or clients in crisis. So those are times when the client will need the therapist's uh, directions even more than uh, typical. Examine behavioral directions, specific actions, wants, perceptions, new directions, and plans. When it is with a partner, is your current behavior bringing you closer to people important to you, or is it driving you further apart? 
Is what you are doing helping or hurting you? Is what you are doing now what you want to be doing? Is your behavior working for you? Is there a healthy congruence between what you're doing and what you believe? Is what you're doing against the rules? Is what you want realistic or attainable? After carefully examining what you want, does it appear to be in the best interest in and in the best interest of others? So these are again our questions that you would want to ask your, your, your client if they were in like, let's say a, a couple's uh, issue. Planning in action. Uh, what is your plan? The process of creating and carrying out plans enable people to begin to gain effective control of their lives. Obviously, this is the time where basically what they are going to do with their lives is going to change their lives, right? So this is a really important part. This is the action-oriented part. Uh, plans give the client a starting point, hope, and can be modified along the way. Again, if a plan doesn't work, we can alter it because we're like, you know what? We tried this and it didn't work, but that's okay because we all need to grow and learn. We can't all be perfect and make the right decisions every time. Uh, plans are only effective if the client have done honest self-evaluation. Remember, that was a cornerstone is self-evaluation. So if they really mean it and they really want it, then it's more likely it's going to happen. Um, a good plan is called SAMIC. If you look at this, I mean, again, it's S-A-M-I-C, but it should be S-A-M-I-C-C-C, which means your plan or your, your, your framework, uh, your, your, let's say your, your treatment plan should be simple, attainable, measurable, immediate, involved, controlled by the planner, which is the client, committed to by the client, and then also consistently done, again, by the client. So those are things that uh, will help have a plan that is very effective and most likely be realistically achieved. Application group counseling, meet their needs to the group, uh, relationship with group members. Uh, members take a lead in deciding what is homework, so you're letting the group decide what to do. Change will not come from insight alone, so just because you realize something doesn't mean that it's going to change your behavior, because sometimes we realize, oh, maybe I'm you know, not so great here. No, we need to actually start doing those things as well, and that's really important. Change does not come from insight alone. Watch when other members are ready to change, so the clients are encouraged to notice other people. And if certain members don't ever change, then they'll have to take more active role in creating change. So other people might start challenging them, or the therapist, the facilitator might start challenging them as well, because we notice that some members of our group are falling behind, or not necessarily ready yet, and we want to address those things. Uh, reality therapy, when it comes to a multicultural perspective, the strengths are respected by differences in worldviews between themselves and their client. Again, uh, the client has this paradise. It's individualistic. It can come from any culture and it'll be fine. Refraining from telling the client what to change. The five needs are believed to be universal, so it can apply to anyone. Remember those five things that we talked about earlier? Those things are universal in any country. Any per, uh, person in the world usually will have those same things, so then it is uh, pretty multicultural. And some warning may need to be softened for some culture, okay? And when it comes to the haters or the shortcomings of reality therapy, external environments that may prevent clients from getting what they want from life is discrimination, racism, sexism, homophobia, heterosexism, ageism, and negative attitude towards disability. Remember those things where when we talk about choice, we can't just say, oh, I'm going to choose not to be LGBT, Right? You can pretend, but you're really not choosing, you know, you're not changing yourself. Or discrimination when it comes to your ethnicity, people of color are discriminated against. Um, so those are things that they necessarily cannot control in the environment. But they realize, okay, I'm a person of color. What do I need to do to, uh, to deal with this, right? And some clients are very reluctant to, to directly verbally express what they need. Again, some of our culture-wise, we are like to be told what to do as opposed to telling other people what to do or telling, vocalizing what we want to do because um, we're a little bit more of a passive culture, okay? And so this basically concludes the chapter. Hopefully this will uh, help you and I will talk to you later. Bye-bye.